Is this song in the key of boring? It sounds like you need a delicious blue bunny treat that's loaded to the last bite. They have reached fun lightenment. Do not forget the season finale of NCIS tonight on CBS is going to be something. And Sean, thanks for being here as always, man. Kevin, thank you for having me. Seriously, you're always the best. Hopefully in the fall, we can get everybody here. The whole crew. That would be nice. You make the call. <laughs> All right. Today we found out who got nominated for a daytime Emmy. Take a look. Happening now. After three children witnessed the horrific act of their mother being murdered, the emotional trauma they and other family members must have to deal with next. The death of George Floyd by a police officer sparked worldwide calls for change. And on the anniversary of his death, how a rare bipartisan bill on policing in Washington is within reach. 100 days after the winter freeze wreaked havoc on our power grid and our gardens, one expert is saying it may not be as bad on our landscaping as we thought. After all the rain, you know the mosquitoes are coming. Coming up, which repellents and ingredients work the best. And I'll be back in a few minutes. We'll take a look at radar, see what showers are lingering across South Texas, and talk about this warmth and the high humidity, what that means for our weekend. Coming right up, the News at 5 starts right now. At first at five, still considered a person of interest, the man detained for questioning yesterday in the murder of a 28-year-old mother has not been charged yet. Samantha Lopez killed right in front of her children just moments before she was about to drive them to school. Jessica DeGuyada with the emotional trauma that's now been inflicted on those children. This is a tragedy of, of enormous proportions. A mother losing her life, being shot in the presence of her children. It, it just doesn't get any worse than that. When it happened, the children were in the back seat of their mother's double cab pickup truck. Almost immediately, Samantha Lopez's three children, ages two, six, and ten, were taken from the scene by a neighbor and grandmother. Whatever the circumstances, Palais says whenever a child loses a mother. The most important human being in their lives is extremely, extremely, extremely traumatic. In this case, horribly compounded by the way their 28-year-old mother died. That will be a presence in their memories forever. For the sake of the children, she says their grandmother or other family members who were traumatized as well will all need counseling and treatment as soon as possible. They need some professional help, the entire family, so that they may assist the children as well. The lie says she's offered the help of her I therapists who are trained for circumstances such as this. Jesse Degollado, KSAT 12 News. A candlelight vigil is planned for tonight at the northeast side apartment complex where Lopez was killed. We will continue to follow the story and we will have updates on any developments both on air and online. Meanwhile, a man is waiting at, is awaiting extradition to Bear County in the murder of 24 year old Delon Lamont Weaver. He was fatally shot at an apartment complex yesterday. According to SAPD, the suspect 26 year old Keith Corley arrested yesterday on a murder charge in Madison County, that's north of Houston. He's accused of shooting Weaver during an argument at the Antioch Village apartment on Upland Road on the city's east side yesterday. Weaver died at the hospital. A chase involving Bear County Sheriff's deputies ending with one person in handcuffs today. The Sheriff's Office says that chase started around 1130 in the morning after a man in a van was seen driving erratically. The suspect and deputies came to a stop near I-10 in East Houston. That's where two people inside the van, a man and a woman, got out and tried to run away. Deputies found drugs inside the van, which they say was also stolen. The man facing a charge of evading arrest, but more charges are pending. The woman, though, not facing charges at this time. We have more details on a shooting involving an undercover SAPD officer. We told you about it yesterday. 25-year-old Matthew Medell accused of shooting at a detective's unmarked vehicle yesterday in the 1900 block of Lennon. San Antonio police say the detective was investigating a report of a stolen truck at that location. After driving by several times to get the license plate, he parked about a block away. Police say Medell then drove by the undercover officer, rolled down the window, pointed a gun at the detective and opened fire. The vehicle and the detective were not hit. Medell faces a charge of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. 
Today marking one year since the death of George Floyd, the 46 year old black man killed over an alleged counterfeit $20 bill at the hands of Minneapolis police. This afternoon, the Floyd family meeting privately with President Joe Biden at the White House and with key members of Congress talking about his legacy and also the status of a police reform bill named in his honor. ABC's Alex Perche in Minneapolis with the latest. From Minneapolis to Washington, George Floyd's legacy being honored today. His family, including his daughter Gianna, meeting with President Biden behind closed doors at the White House. Being here today is an honor, you know, to meet with the president and the vice president and for them to show their concern to our family. The president told the family he'd get a police reform bill passed by today. Congress has signaled that won't happen, but they're still optimistic. Gianna said, my daddy will change the world. Bipartisan talks in the Senate now showing signs of progress after being stalled over the issue of qualified immunity for police officers. The fundamentals of this bill has to be greater transparency in American policing, uh, greater accountability in American policing. Democrats are pushing to end qualified immunity, which shields officers from being sued for damages for their actions on the job. And Republicans don't support that. Meanwhile, this morning in Minneapolis, next but gunfire inside the autonomous zone near George Floyd Square. The city confirms at least one person was injured. Our cameras lied when it happened. Local leaders say the area has struggled with violence since Floyd's death. But Minneapolis is determined to celebrate the impact George Floyd's had on the nation, especially today. Data from the National Conference on State Legislatures found at least 82 bills enacted across the country aimed at police reform and transparency since Floyd's death. Meanwhile, Derek Chauvin, who was convicted of second and third degree murder, also second degree manslaughter for his role in George Floyd's death, will be sentenced next month, June 25th. Alex Perche, ABC News, Minneapolis. A National Missing Children's Database lists 56 people from the San Antonio area, five whom are now adults if they're still alive. Today on what is National Missing Children's Day, the Texas Center for the Missing, the National Center for Missing Children, SAPD, and Clear Channel launching a billboard campaign to help find Alani McCoslin. She was last seen 10 days ago in Holotus. She has a medical condition. The plan is to broadcast her image on digital billboards for a month. If you have any information on her disappearance, call 210-207-7660. Things are slowly returning to normal here in the U.S. with COVID-19 numbers down and vaccinations steadily increasing. The nation's two largest school districts are planning on returning to in-person learning come fall to. ABC's Rita Roy has the details. A major milestone in the fight against COVID-19. The White House telling ABC more than half of American adults ages 18 and older will soon be fully vaccinated. Thanks to vaccines, tens of millions of Americans are able to get back to something closer to normal. Ohio's Vaximillion Lottery has prompted nearly 3 million people to sign up for shots. Moderna now joining Pfizer, saying its vaccine is effective in kids 12 and older, with plans to ask the FDA for emergency use authorization next month. Their clinical trials in teens ages 12 to 15 showed 100% efficacy and zero serious safety signals. Promising signs as students get ready to go back into classrooms come fall. The last 14 months put a stark spotlight on how nothing can replace the, the importance of the in-person educator in class with his or her students. New York City public schools plan to fully reopen with students and staff required to mask up. Schools will follow CDC social distancing guidelines, desks three feet apart. Remote learning no longer an option. Los Angeles also expected to resume in-person learning five days a week, but online learning will still be available for those who need it for health reasons. To keep numbers down here in the U.S., federal officials have added Japan to the do not travel COVID advisory list, with the country seeing a surge in cases less than two months ahead of the Tokyo Olympics. Many are calling for the games to be postponed for a second time, but for now, they're still on. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York.
It is day two of early voting in the city's runoff election. More than 2,700 people cast their ballot yesterday, the first day of early voting. Districts 1, 2, 3, 5, and 9 are in a runoff. You can find a list of polling locations and hours right now on KSAT.com. Early voting ends on June 1st. Election day is Saturday, June 5th. We had a few showers out there this morning and some this afternoon far east of town, but generally speaking, the activity has come to an end. Nothing to worry about around town or even east of San Antonio. Go west across the border and in the mountains of Mexico. We have some development out there. There's the slightest off chance some of that could mosey its way toward Valverde County, but right now odds are against that happening. So for the most part, remaining dry the rest of this evening and into tonight. 74 this morning. That humidity giving us these warm mornings. 89 the high temperature. That's exactly average for this time of year. We're 92 in Del Rio, 87 in Floresville, and even neighboring Panna Maria. 84 right now, Leon Springs, and up to 93 in Universal City. New Braunfels earlier today had nearly two tenths of an inch from those morning showers. Clear early this evening. Then clouds developing later on tonight. We're going to talk about what that means for uh, viewing the lunar eclipse coming up in a few minutes and future rain chances as well. See you then, Ursula. Thank you, Adam. It has been 100 days since the start of winter storms that brought half a foot of snow and several days below freezing temperatures to San Antonio. And while that February freeze wreaked havoc on the power grid, it appears San Antonio Gardens may have been hit harder than expected. Garrett Berger talks with the folks at Rainbow Gardens with what you need to know about your plants. Mid-February snow and extended cold weather heralded power outages for many San Antonians and for gardeners, possibly the loss of some of their beloved plants. In my uh, elevated garden bed, a lot of the plants that I had grown, uh, because of the winter storms, they, uh, they died. So some people made out better than others. Some people did lose quite a bit of stuff in their yard. However, Brandon Kirby at Rainbow Garden says it now seems that overall, the damage to local plants wasn't as bad as originally feared. But the good news is that all of these evergreens are starting to flush with growth again. Um, and a lot of these root hardy perennials that we have in our gardens, which froze back and a lot of people thought that they had lost, are coming back from the roots and are looking beautiful now. And even now, it could be too early to consider a plant gone for good. We had said, you know, wait till uh, mid-April and then we said mid-May and now I'd even push it off to mid-June. Even trees whose leaves haven't returned could still come back yet. This rainier than average May, possibly helping them recover from the colder than average February. That rain's going to help everything flush with nice green growth, and um, it really should should kickstart any vitality that's left in the tree if it still has some. Alsa Digliotti is one gardener who feared she'd lose her plants to the freeze. But they are coming back, so that's the good news. Though that's not keeping her from finding a few more besides. I never enough plants, that's what I say. Now, if you want to determine whether or not a plant's healthy, they get, folks here at Rainbow Garden suggest that you check the wood, see if it's pliable, or if you scratch it and see green underneath, it's probably living still. However, if you touch it and it's brittle or mushy, that plant is probably gone and might be better to find a replacement. If you're not sure one way or the other, the best course of action is to just be patient and wait and see. Live at Rainbow Gardens, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. Ah, the bushy test. Ugh. <laughs> this is also something we don't like after harsh weather. Spring and summer bringing out the warmest days, nights, more time outdoors, and more mosquito bites. Coming up, we're going to take a look at which repellents you might want to grab on your next trip to the store. All this rain has been great for greening up the grass, but it also brings out the mosquitoes. Metro Health is encouraging folks to get rid of the standing water wherever you can find it. Something else you can do to prevent the itchy bites? Insect repellent. 12 on your side's Marilyn Mortz on what ingredients do work best. 
With all this rain, you know they're coming for you. Blood-sucking mosquitoes. Their bites can itch, and worse, they can spread disease. So which bug repellents work the best? Consumer Reports put several to the test. Volunteers applied repellent and 30 minutes later stuck their arms into these cages filled with 200 disease-free mosquitoes. Our testing paints a pretty clear picture. No matter the brand or what kind of repellent you're using, products made with 15 to 30 percent DEET worked the best. A couple they say are best buys are Total Home CVS Woodland Scent Insect Repellent and 3M Ultrathon Insect Repellent 8. The EPA says DEET has been thoroughly tested and is safe when properly used. But if you're still looking for a non-DEET alternative... Products with 30% oil of lemon eucalyptus are good alternatives, and we also have a few high scorers that contain 20% picaridin. No matter which you choose, to be effective, it has to be applied properly. Use a thin coat on all exposed skin. You can spray on top of your clothes, but not under. And be sure to wash your hands after. As for natural repellents made with various botanicals, the test showed those are not as effective. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Tackling outdoor work anytime soon, getting the job done means breaking out the lawn tools. And if yours are worn out, it might be time to replace them. Coming up tomorrow at 5, the top battery-powered tools that are great for mowing and edging and also better for the environment. Take a live look outside with live cam right now. 90 degrees, some clouds out there, but this morning we had some big time showers, then they just cleared out. Then they just cleared on out. We had about a tenth of an inch at the airport. Uh, that's officially in San Antonio. Other locations obviously got a little bit more, but now we just have the sunshine. So I do want to point out, we have the lunar eclipse that peaks tomorrow morning at 618 AM. I'm sorry, it's looking too cloudy around here to be able to see it. I'm bummed as well, and this humid air stays in place. And we can actually blame this humid air for the low clouds that we'll have in the morning. Let's take a look at our weather pattern. You see parts of Texas getting in on some action out there today, especially East Texas and parts of West Texas as well. You get up into the uh, parts of West Texas and the higher elevations there, they're seeing some showers and storms getting triggered. And actually, that's where we need the rain the most. So it's nice to see it there. The little disturbance that we had in the air, this little ripple that's pushing off to the northeast. So no surprise, most of the shower action moving into Louisiana, Arkansas, and even up into Missouri. So let's talk about our cloud cover. I'd love to see the total lunar eclipse as well. But in this kind of weather pattern, it's rare to get that clear sky early in the morning. Here's midnight, partly cloudy conditions, but the clouds will be filling in, likely coming in from the southeast. Then we get to tomorrow morning. Right around the peak of the lunar eclipse, low clouds in place, maybe even a sprinkle or two or some patchy drizzle. And it's that humidity coming off the Gulf that really helps to generate and develop those low clouds. But by midday, noon hour, we're looking sunny. We're looking fairly clear, just partly cloudy, those patchy fair weather clouds, and even a few highly isolated pop-up showers here and there. Kind of like today, we'll have a little bit in the afternoon, but not as much in the morning hours. Just a few popping up, especially east of town in the afternoon. Our rain chances are starting to quiet down a little bit for the time being, at least for now. There are some indications that as we get into the next week, we could see activity ramp up again. But for now, we're looking at 20% tomorrow and then not even a chance Thursday and Friday, then up to 10 to 20% through the upcoming holiday weekend, even through Memorial Day. So rain chances eh, not as good right now. Luckily, we got our dose. The aquifer is up over 18 feet since April 26. Actually, today I swung by San Pedro Springs Park. It was good to see the water flowing nicely. Good, clean water flowing out of there. I posted some pictures on our KSAT Weather Authority app, by the way, you can access there. 88 right now, dew point is 72. It's that high humidity, that thick humidity, the tropical humidity in place that's making it feel so muggy outside. That's the oppressive category when that dew point gets up above 70. And we're gonna stay there for a while. Gone are the days where we get a big break from the humidity. I know we had a lot of that through parts of the spring, but right now, those days are gone and we don't see a relief anytime soon. 91 in Pleasanton, 91 Carrizo Springs, Catula up to 94. Those are the hot spots. Meanwhile, 85 in Gonzales and Kerrville. So let's talk temperatures tomorrow morning, low to mid 70s. It's those high dew points that'll keep us in the 70s tomorrow morning and give us those thick low clouds to start the day by the afternoon. 
Laredo could be talking 100 degrees. They'll have a little extra sunshine along the border compared to us here in San Antonio. So Del Rio 95, even Uvalde 90. Here in town, we're thinking upper 80s, mid to upper 80s. So Holotus 85, Stone Oak 87, Elmendorf about 88 for the high temperature. A decent amount of sunshine once we get through the morning, but when you factor in the humidity, keep in mind it's going to feel like we're in the mid 90s because of that tropical air in place. And then high temperatures will be right near 90 the rest of the week and into the weekend, maybe trim back a few degrees, but you're not going to notice it much because of the high humidity. Thank you, Adam. All right, so it's hard to tell which direction the Spurs are going to go in next year, but one of the young guns had a great year. DeJounte Murray coming off a career year. Remember, just two years after he missed that entire season after he tore his ACL. When we come back, we'll ask DeJounte what he thought about that. And the PGA issues an apology after the chaos in 18. Coming up. Star point guard Gazanti Murray is coming up a career year with the silver and black. His scoring average is higher than ever before, 15.7 points a game. So is his field goal percentage from two-point range at almost 49%. He also set career marks in rebounding with 7.1 per game to go along with his career high in assist at 5.4. And get this, in 67 games he played this season, he started in every single one. Also a career first, included five triple doubles. Now in the middle of his four-year $64 million contract extension, he signed after missing all of the 2018-2019 season with a torn ACL. How does Gazanti believe he improved. That's not my job. Uh, I don't want to praise myself. I don't want to talk down to myself. Uh, you know, I leave that up to you guys who, who watch the game, uh, my family, my coaches, the organization, fans. You know, that's that's up for y'all. You know, my job is going to forever be just grind. You know, put my head down, go work, get better. Uh, I know what I got to do. Uh, I know what I want to become. And I feel like I'm on the right road, though. And that's all that matters. Uh, I feel like I'm on the right road to where I want to be. And after losing game one to the Portland Trailblazers in Denver, 123 to 109, the Nuggets responded to take game two of the best of seven first round playoff series last night with a major adjustment after Damian Lillard was on his way to a second straight scorching of Denver by scoring eight three pointers and 32 points. The Nuggets made a big switch at halftime. Aaron Gordon took over guarding Lillard, and it was a stroke of genius because after that, Lillard would only make one more three pointer and finish with 42. Meantime, Nikola Jokic led the Nuggets with 38 points on 15 and 20 shooting to go along with his eight rebounds, five assists, and the Nuggets get even in this series, 128 to 109. Congratulations to San Antonio's own Jordan Clarkson, who was named the winner of the NBA Sixth Man of the Year Award. The Wagner grad averaged a career high 18.4 points per game, was the only bench player to score 40 points in a game this season. He's the only member of the Utah Jazz to ever win that award. Look, I don't mind waiting or being in that crowd, but, you know, getting my... I don't know, it felt like somebody tried to. I don't know what the deal was, but um, that's what it is. After PGA Championship runner-up, Brooks Kempka complained about members of the gallery running into a surgically repaired knee today. The CEO of PGA America, Zeth Waugh, issued an apology for the chaos in 18 when the crowd overwhelmed both winner Phil Mickelson and Brooks Kepka, their caddies and security on 18. In a statement, Waugh added, we always put player safety at the top of our list and grateful order was restored. I've spoken to both player and have apologized on behalf of the organization. And you have to remember the moment that was in. That was the largest crowd, and it was the historic moment of Phil winning. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Greg. We'll be right back. We want to bring you some breaking news on the city's east side. SAPD responding to a shooting in the 200 block of Noblewood Drive in McClendon Parkway. That's the Alsbury Farms apartment home. So we have a crew on the scene. We are working to learn details. This isn't all that far from the Wheatley Heights sports complex to give you kind of an idea of the area we're talking about a shooting with a crew on the scene. We'll have much more coming up next at six.